Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at part two of how to make an elk hunting theme knife. Now part two is going to cover the electro etching, scales, and sharpening. This particular knife is AEBL stainless steel. It has scales that have uh, elk ivory inlays on one side and a bullet casing inlay on the other side. So we start the electro etching process by taking the design and cutting it out with a, a Silhouette Cameo Craft Vinyl Cutting Machine. I then take that vinyl and after cleaning the blade with alcohol and drying it completely, I use a transfer film to place it exactly where I want it on the blade. I then weed that design, which means to remove anything or all the parts that I want etched. So basically anything that remains covered in vinyl will stay shiny and does not get etched. What I'm removing is going to become darker from the etching. Now if you look at the bushes in the foreground underneath the elk and, and on the foreground of the trees, we're going to do a multi-tone uh, etching here. So I'm going to leave the vinyl on for now. I'm going to do the first etching and then I'll remove that vinyl um, and etch it for a less amount of time to get a lighter etch. Now I use an automotive uh, battery charger, 12 volts, 2 amps, an electro plate which just has a negative lead going to it, a solution of white vine vinegar and salt, and that electroplate is wrapped with gauze. I um, etch 12 volts, 2 amps, for a total of about 2 minutes in, in 10 to 20 second increments. Uh, I often cool it, you know, maybe every minute or so. I cool it in fresh water, dry it off, and bring it back uh, to the table. Now once I get about 2 minutes on the first etching, these are going to be all those uh, deeper, darker lines. I'm then going to remove the bushes. I'm going to remove the vinyl from the bushes in the foreground. And then I'll just repeat that process, but for a much shorter time, probably about 30 seconds, just to give it you know, some color or some, some tone. Then I can remove all of the vinyl. And if you notice, I had vinyl covering the back of the blade also. I didn't want to inadvertently uh, etch the back of the blade while I was working on one side. And then I'm going to clean that off with about a, a thousand grit paper. And that's really the first, the first time you get to see what the uh, end result is going to look like. My, my customer wanted to commemorate um, a successful elk hunt. So he actually provided um, the inspiration for the knife as well as the elk ivory. So the scales, um, I've done you know, many videos on segmented scales. I'm not going to show you how to segment them. It's a pretty straightforward process. But what's different here is I've taken, uh, again, a cutout from that craft vinyl cutting machine of elk hoof prints. And I put that um, silhouette right onto the wood. And I'm going to use a Dremel grinder with a very small routering bit and a router attachment to slowly start to cut away everything that's on the inside of that stencil. So it's a, a self-adhesive vinyl stencil is basically what I created of the hoof prints. And I'm just going to carefully and very slowly, it's just, you know, it takes, takes quite a while. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to dig into that vinyl at all. You just really want to carve away the wood nice and deep. And once that's all done, I'm going to start working on the ivory. Now this is one of the uh, the elk teeth that I was given. I've got to make it fit within those two hoof prints. So what I did was I ground a flat and I used the same vinyl uh, stencil and applied the two uh, hoofs to that flat. And then I just used a, a drum sanding wheel on the Dremel grinder and slowly carved it to shape. And of course there's a lot of, of testing the fit. When I finally got it um, to fit the way I want it, I actually hammered it in place. I like to use a tool that has a little bit of a rubber um, coating on it so I don't damage that ivory at all. If there are any gaps at all, you can use some dust, you just sand some of the wood, tap that all down so that it goes into, fills any of the little grooves, the little spaces in between the ivory and the wood handle. And this wood was stabilized before I came, um, segmented it. And then 
then I just use some thin uh, super glue. I use the Bob Smith brand. It's always worked really well for me. And I saturate the dust with that. And that penetrates all the way down to the bottom. That'll, that'll secure the ivory into place as well as filling those voids with the dust. I'm then, then just going to go back to the 2x72 grinder. And I'm just going to um, sand the top of those scales so that, I'm, so that the ivory is now flush with the top of the scales. For the other side, I'm using a Total Boat Thick Set resin. I've drilled a hole and I've cut the bottom off of that bullet casing. And I'm just going to cover that with a coating of Total Boat Thick Set Resin. And then I'm just going to walk away from that for about four or five days. Let that completely cure. The, the Total Boat Resin is really nice to work with because it's so thin, it, it doesn't trap any bubbles. Um, and any, any of the bubbles that are in the mix, you know, have plenty of time to reach the surface before it hardens. I'm then going to glue up these, these handles or these scales. I've pre-drilled the holes. I've already polished that front or leading edge of the scales. And I'll, you know, the pins are in position, the handles are both in position. I'll clamp those, I'll clean them up with the alcohol and wait for them to dry. Once that is dry, I can go back to the 2x72. I'll profile, I'll finish profiling uh, the handles. You can actually get that, that inside edge by letting the, the belt overhang one side of the flat platen. And then I actually do a lot of the shaping right on the 2x72. Uh, so I'll, I'll curve the, the upper uh, edge of the handles and I'll also use the 2 inch uh, contact wheel on the bottom of the flat platen, platen in order to uh, you know rough shape the inside curves. And then I, I finish on an oscillating sander, handheld sander, and I'll you know work through the grits. Um, after the handle is done, it's time to sharpen the knife. Uh, so I go back onto the 2x72. I use a 120 grit uh, to establish the micro bevel, and I hold the blade at approximately 20 degrees, and I grind both sides until I develop an, a burr along the entire edge of the, of the blade. You want to be able to catch your fingernail on it. Once I have that, then I'll run through a variety of different belts. You know, so I'll start at 120. Um, I usually go to 240, something in the 800, 1000, and then 2000 range. And I slow down the machine with each belt change. So really, other than that original 120, I'm polishing that micro bevel for the rest of the time. Uh, once I'm done, down to 2000 grit belt, I'll switch and I'll put a leather stroping belt. I just use the 2x72 to kind of hold that. I, uh, it's not turning. And I'll finish the polish with that leather belt. It's a very quick process, uh, but the blades are, end up being razor sharp. And that's basically it. This is the finished uh, piece. So it's got a bullet casing on one side, a full blade etching uh, showing the elk. Um, they're segmented handles, uh, ironwood, and it has uh, you know, some very unique hoof prints that are inlaid with elk ivory. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would absolutely love to hear some feedback if you could leave a comment in the comment section. If you're interested in making your own knives, um, I'd like to, join, um, to invite you to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making, or uh, and or uh, check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out, I guess it's about two years now, uh, called Introduction to Knife Making, and you can find that on Amazon.com. Thank you very much for watching.